Every single point you see on the screen, that's actually a galaxy. And some of these galaxies are very, very bright. Hello, wonderful person. Today we're going to be talking about a discovery, or actually a rediscovery, of a very strange galaxy, an extremely bright galaxy, that we initially thought was a quasar. Turns out it's something completely different. Something we really didn't expect to find. So let's discuss this study and the analysis of a galaxy known as BOSS EUV LG1, and also find out why this is important. So first of all, if we were to look around the universe, we would find some galaxies much, much brighter than others. As a matter of fact, some galaxies are so bright you can see them from essentially the edge of the visible universe. But the most famous examples of these bright galaxies are known as quasars. These are galaxies with extremely active central cores, with the so-called active galactic nucleus, that creates a very, very bright center because the supermassive black hole in the middle is responsible for creating a tremendous amount of energy and also a tremendous amount of powerful galactic winds and a lot of other emissions that make this galaxy extremely brilliant and very, very bright from faraway distances. And naturally, this makes quasars some of the most luminous, if not the most luminous, objects in the universe. And although quasars are pretty much everywhere in the universe and we've found so many of them, they're not really the only ones that are so bright. Some galaxies can also be bright because they're just forming a lot of stars at the same time, and the star formation and the activity around the galaxy can also give them just enough luminosity to be visible from faraway distances. Although unlike quasars, these active galaxies where stars are forming really quickly normally have one issue. And the issue is that they also contain a tremendous amount of intergalactic and interstellar gas that often blocks many types of light with only some light being visible to us. Because of this, we normally refer to these galaxies as luminous infrared galaxies, also known as LIR. Here's sort of what they might look like. They're extremely luminous, but they're only visible in infrared light because most of the other light is blocked by the gas, which makes these galaxies so much difficult to see in optical light. In other words, you would need a special infrared telescope to be able to see them. And also, they're not as bright as quasars, meaning that they are normally only visible from certain distances. And in comparison to our own galaxy that produces around one to maybe two masses of the sun in terms of new stars per year, a typical LIR or luminous infrared galaxy like the one you see here will produce around 100 times more, which is why they're so much brighter. Okay, so we kind of covered the basis here. We know what quasars are, we know what luminous infrared galaxies are. What exactly is happening with this galaxy? Well, initially when this was discovered and also classified by the survey known as BOSS, which stands for Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey, the scientists believed that they just discovered a new quasar that wasn't really special in any way, but it was a pretty bright galaxy. Also, with a redshift of 2.47, it means that this galaxy was pretty far away from us. It was essentially in the part of the universe that showed us the universe when it was only about 2 billion years old. That's over 11 billion years ago which according to this calculator gives it a distance of about 19.2 billion light years away from Earth. So it is pretty far, but just the fact that we can see it means that it's already quite bright, much brighter than most of the galaxies we usually see. But the problem is that it was also emitting a type of a light that's normally not seen from quasars. It was producing a lot of ultraviolet light, and it was also producing what's known as Lyman alpha emissions, which is essentially emissions of hydrogen line. In other words, what this suggested is that a lot of stars were being generated in this particular galaxy, way, way more than we expected, which also implied to the scientists that the brightness itself was not coming from the black hole in the middle, it was coming from the entirety of the galaxy. But something wasn't really making sense because the galaxy was still way brighter than it should be. And it was also not producing any infrared light like the previously mentioned LIR galaxies, suggesting that something else is happening here and something we've never seen before. And well, the only explanation that the scientists give so far is that it's most likely because way more stars are being formed in this galaxy, and also it only started not so long ago, in terms of cosmological ages. And here we're talking about possibly 100 million years or even less than 100 million years ago. And just based on the amount of light and the light detected that the scientists analyzed, 
they suggest that approximately thousand or so masses of the sun are being formed in this galaxy every single year. That's at least a thousand times more star formation in the galaxy than in our own Milky Way. And what makes this even more unusual is that in terms of the size, the galaxy is around 30 times smaller than the Milky Way galaxy, which would make it look something like this. So if this is the representation of the Milky Way galaxy, here is what this new bright galaxy might look like, although in this case the luminosity should be even brighter. Nevertheless, everything you see in this galaxy is essentially a region where the stars are forming and are creating a tremendous amount of light and a tremendous amount of energy. But also because this galaxy doesn't seem to have as much dust in it, we're able to see this light coming from every direction from a really really far away distance. And this is what makes this galaxy different from luminous infrared galaxies. Those galaxies have a lot of dust. This one doesn't seem to have almost any dust. And this to the scientists suggested one thing. We're probably just looking at a baby luminous infrared galaxy, or essentially at a baby dwarf galaxy that will eventually combine with other galaxies and with time with billions of years of evolution will turn into something similar to the Milky Way galaxy. And one of the telltale signs for why this is probably a very young galaxy is just the fact that its luminosity is very low. This means that not a lot of supernova happened here, not a lot of gas enrichment occurred, and most of these stars and most of the material here is essentially brand new. It probably existed for maybe a few hundred million years, and it then started to create a lot of stars at the same time. And so eventually, once these supernovas start happening, this is when all of the dust will start coming out, and will then probably turn this galaxy into a luminous infrared galaxy, which will make it very bright in the infrared light, but not so bright in the ultraviolet light that it's currently emitting. At least that's the current assumption after one paper. But with more follow-up papers and with more studies of this galaxy, we might actually discover what's really happening here. For all we know, maybe this is a completely new type of a galaxy we've never seen before, and maybe it will help us solve some other mysteries in the universe that we've never been able to solve. But for now, that's all we know. Until we learn more, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.